I joined the, the RCM as a postgraduate and it was uh, a bit of a shock to the system actually coming from university to conservatoire life and I'd say that I was just astounded by my, my peers and, and what was surrounding me, um, the orchestras, the ensembles and, and actually always being surrounded by music um, was a really beautiful thing to to sort of dive into at that time and um, I I knew very little about opera as well so going to college operas um, and um, experiencing that for the the very first time was was hugely exciting. <laughs> It's not something I essentially started out with the intention of, of developing. It was just, I, I realized that I, I wanted to say certain things. I wanted to understand certain things. And, and that was all related to storytelling, whose stories are told, uh, which stories haven't we heard, and um, who decides which stories we're, we're told. Great silence. I hear approaching rain. That has informed both my 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 singing um, and the the projects that I've developed. Uh, so I, I was really keen to look into music that had been suppressed or censored, uh, specifically music that was banned by the Third Reich in uh, Austria and Germany. So I developed a, a project around that. And through that, then the writing started to develop as a as a sideline because I was writing about that project. Um, and and so it, it everything started to... Um, influence the the next thing and um and before i knew it i was building up the the so-called portfolio um career yeah, so the, the project rediscovering black portraiture was informed essentially uh, in the beginning by my ancestry research and I was kind of disgruntled that I wasn't seeing uh, any of my black ancestors represented in the research that I was undertaking. And I was finding lots of gaps and, and empty spaces, uh, sometimes a name, sometimes nothing at all. Um, and I realized that this was a, a common experience uh, for, for many people. Um, and it coincided with seeing the, the Getty Museum challenge on social media. And I, I was scrolling through and I was looking at all of these really famous images uh, that we, we know and love. And I, I realized uh, after a while that I wasn't seeing many black uh, faces or, or people of color. And I, I thought, well, maybe it, it'll be fun to try one of these myself and uh, let's see if I can find someone who has hair similar to mine or, or something like that. Um, so I, I started with one and very quickly realized that there was an appetite for this and people were interested by, by the stories and uh, the biographies of the people in the pictures. And so it became a, an opportunity like um banned or suppressed music to uncover some of these histories and uh, give them space and and do it in a in a playful way i was really keen to recreate a picture of Samuel Coleridge Taylor and that was because when I was at college one of the first things I did was buy a postcard of Coleridge Taylor that um, they were selling in in the foyer and I had this pinned to my wall um, when I was living in halls of residence and it was a 
sort of talisman, uh, inspirational role model, and someone who had overcome adversity to to reach the top and became a a hugely successful and well loved figure in in the country, and uh, died tragically at such an early age, um, but created this this um, hugely influential body of work. Um, some of um, some of it isn't even known today. Yeah, I'm really um, attached to to any image of Samuel Coleridge Taylor actually because it, it was such a um, a fortifying uh, aspect of my time at, at college to to have him as a as an alum and um, uh, a role model as well. <laughs> English National Opera's Breathe program has been really inspirational and using breathing and well-being um, as a way of um, helping people who are suffering from the effects of, of COVID-19. Uh, that's been great to see how um, singing can be used in, in such a, a, a positive way and reach so many different people. I'd say that in terms of representation, for me, it always comes back to the storytelling and the stories we're telling uh, through our art form. And if we tell stories that people see themselves represented in, then they will feel that there is a space for them uh, within the industry. And they will also feel like they can bring more of themselves um, to the table as well so i i think it's um it's a, a ridiculous thing that we're still having to talk about it um because it it's simple really it's it's making all feel welcome and uh and enjoying the fact that uh it only enriches what we do I'd say that it's still really early days without organizations fun functioning in the way that they um, are, are used to. So, um, but I, I'd say what is exciting is conversations with organizations that have been really punching above their weight for a long time and not really getting as, as much recognition as they as they should. So um, I'm a huge champion of uh, the, the work and ethos of Pegasus Opera and what they do to, to champion um, representation within their organization and who is seen on stage and, and uh, the, the voices that are heard through um, the organization and um, whose voices are platformed. I think for young people, representation, seeing it in, in our industry um, is a way of uh, feeling that there is a, a space for them and they don't have to do um, something extra as a consequence of uh, what what they look like um, because there are uh, a, a variety of, of voices being heard within the industry and um, 
there is there is equity. Work very hard, but also I I love that the American soprano Leon Tim Price said in in many of her interviews that you should always enjoy making music. Um, and I, I think sometimes it's it's easy to forget that um, and really enjoy um, that you were able to do it um, and um, take take pleasure from the act of of being able to um, express yourself in in this way and um, I feel very lucky that I'm able to do it. The unrelaxing tension of the world and only hope, hope only the kind eagle soars in flight. Coming up, I'm going to be writing and presenting a new um, series for Radio 3. Um, and after that, I'll be going to La Monet Opera in Brussels to make my debut there, which I'm, I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm.